A team of online safety experts appeared before Congress to speak about the threat to democracy posed by inflammatory online rhetoric. And among those who showed up was Harvard Law School cyber law instructor Alejandra Caraballo. She, however, quickly became a focal point herself of the hearing when South Carolina Representative Nancy Mace confronted her on her own online rhetoric and asked her, could your online rhetoric have have been a threat to democracy? So let's take a look here. This is uh, is a pretty epic burn she lays on her here. Rhetoric on social media, a problem and a threat to our democracy, Mr. Ward. Yes, absolutely. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Ms. Caraballo. Yes. So that's Caraballo who she just called on. Yes. Ms. Tyler. Yes. Yes. Um, Another question I have, uh, do you believe that rhetoric targeting officials with violence for carrying out their constitutional duties um, is a threat to democracy, Mr. Ward? Mr. Siegel? Yes. Yes. Carbaugh just said yes. 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 All right, thank you very much. Only a few weeks after the attempted attack on a Supreme Court justice on June 25th, one of the witnesses, Alejandra Caraballo, tweeted out the following in response to a decision on abortion overturning Roe v. Wade, and I'll quote directly from the tweet, the six justices who overturned Roe should never know peace again. It is our civic duty to accost them every time they're in public. They are pariahs. Since women don't have their rights, these justices should never have a peaceful moment in public again. All right. So we're going to cut back to that. Uh, There she shows her what the first tweet was. Then she goes on a fairly extended monologue that I didn't want to play about when Nancy Mace was confronted in public by people who supposedly spread inflammatory rhetoric online. So after she tells that little personal story, um, which goes on for longer than I want to let it play, she comes right back and shows another one of uh, Alejandra Caraballo tweets. also recently tweeted on November 19th, not even a month ago, that the Supreme Court, vested with the judicial power of the United States by our Constitution, stated they are not a legitimate court issuing decisions. And also the Supreme Court is an organ of the far right. So my last question today of Ms. Caraballo, do you stand by these comments, this kind of rhetoric on social media, and do you believe it's a threat to democracy? Thank you, Representative, for the opportunity to clarify and provide context to my tweets. Um, and I have a question. question, is it yes or no? Do you believe your rhetoric is a threat to democracy when you're calling to accost a branch of government, the Supreme Court? I don't believe that's a correct act- uh, characterization of my tweeted, statements. Though. Did you not tweet that, that you thought that the Supreme Court justices should be accosted? Did what I'm saying is that that, yes that is no? not a Did you accurate characterization of my statements. So there you have it. Um, I want to address the context in which I said that. Oh, the context is incorrect. Of course, the whole point is when you get uh, penalized on social media, you don't get to explain to someone the context of what you said. They take you off if they don't like what you said, if it violates a guideline. And so it seems like she wants some preferential treatment there. You know what I mean? Uh, Just a fairly extraordinary thing that we see her just caught like a deer in the headlights with no way to explain her hypocrisy of going there as an online safety expert who is a qualified arbiter of what should be allowed online and what shouldn't because certain rhetoric endangers our democracy. And then to have to have a boss move pulled on you like that. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, well, I understand the context is uh, that was a coded message that was part of a scavenger hunt she was participating in. Yeah, right, exactly. So it actually just changed everything when you consider that. This is something that right wing commentators bring up a lot and they're not wrong. And I, I've mentioned this on the show before. There is a lot of information that even if you're in the alternative media space, you're not exposed to because the left media just doesn't cover this stuff. There is a lot of left on right violence and it's just not covered. It's not talked about. You would get the impression that all of the violence is coming from the other side. And why do you get that impression? Well, look what happened with the uh, Colorado shooter. As soon as he said the words, I'm non-binary, that's that story disappeared 
faster than uh, an elephant in a in a Doug Henning act. <laughs> you know, like that story is nowhere to be found anymore. Is isn't that interesting? They it was it was if they had found one article from Stormfront in that guy's house, you'd be hearing about that story every day. And as soon as they found out it was more complicated than that, they dropped that story. It didn't fit the narrative. So look, the the right commentariat, they show this footage. It is very common for these trans-exclusionary radical feminists, as they call them, uh, to get attacked by trans people when they go out and have an event or when they protest. Um, so this notion that political violence or the threat of political violence is a right-wing phenomena is really bullshit. It's that they define it. Well, they'll they'll bury it and invisibilize it very often when it comes from the left, or they'll reframe it as not really being violence if it's coming from people whose politics they agree with. As, well, with, a, the as with a tweet like this, there is subjectivity and in interpretation, of course. Right. And I want to put this comment up from Jean because I think she makes a fair point here accosted to approach and speak to someone in an often challenging or aggressive way. Yeah. Look, um, I don't think necessarily that what Carbio said there was an incitement of violence. I don't think I would interpret it that way. I wouldn't censor her for that tweet. Of course, we're talking about a social media company that banned the president of the United States for incitement of violence for tweeting out that the patriots right. who voted for him would not be treated unfairly. This is part of the Elon Musk leaks, right? So if you're going to interpret that tweet from Trump saying the 75 million patriots who voted for me will not be treated unfairly, they interpreted that as coded incitement to further violence. If you're going to interpret that that way, then you have to interpret her tweet just there as an incitement, right? right. I mean, it's right. a completely right. biased right. interpretation if you're going right. to let that go, but not let the Trump tweet go. Now, uh, she did delete that tweet, so she probably doesn't want it out there because she probably knew that it could be <laughs> used against her in a setting like well, this. especially given her area of expertise, yeah, but then that makes especially sleazy her presentation here. She could have just owned up to it and said, yeah, I tweeted that out. That was wrong. I would have taken that off if I were an admin. So you know what? I took it off myself. She could have just owned it. But she didn't. Actually, she tried that, to weasel that way out I wouldn't. I, yeah, I wouldn't have even had anything to say. No, if she that. said that there wouldn't be a segment here because she would have been like, yeah, you know what? That was a bad tweet. I got rid of it myself. I regret that. You know, but she didn't. She tried to weasel out of it. Well, no, well, you're not interpret. You're not taking into consideration the full context of what I said. You're misrepresenting my tweet. It's right up on the screen. And even if there is some context that we're not getting, the point is you're you're sitting there as a supposed online safety expert. Not everybody who you censor off of your platform gets an opportunity to explain the larger context of their point, right? So just it was just a chicken shit thing to Well, to and say. this is this is a very common refrain on the right. It's okay when we when we do it. Right. That, that's that's what they always throw at the left. So well, that's exactly what that so, is. So yeah, you can debate back and forth whether that's really an incitement to violence. What you can't debate is if that had come from a right winger, that's exactly how they'd interpret it and and it would be on the front page of the Washington Post, probably written by someone about to lose their job. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Please clap.